Gentlemen, they're large, they're fast, and fucking you up's their idea of tourism. And the ultimate predators. Light him up! Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at the latest installment in the Predator franchise, with The Predator, which was directed by Shane Black, starring Boyd Holbrook, Jacob Tremblay, Thomas Jane, Olivia Munn, and Keegan-Michael Key. I've been waiting for a follow-up to the Predator movies for some time, and was pretty excited to hear that Shane Black, who starred as Hawkins in the original film, was going to be helming this picture, which is why I was ultimately so disappointed with the end result, which traded the dramatic tension usually synonymous with the Predator franchise for excessive humour. Yes, the first Predator film is littered with one-liners throughout, but at no point did they detract from the thrilling adventure that the characters embarked on. In the 1987 classic, John McTiernan reversed our expectations by placing a handful of the most dangerous men in the world into a situation beyond their control. The larger-than-life soldiers appear to be on top of everything for the first 30 minutes of the film, with a handful of clues scattered throughout the jungle as to the dangers they were actually in, and by the time the predator begins to hunt them down, the tone of the film changes from an action comedy to a horrifying thriller. Now, the newest Predator film essentially revolves around a soldier and his son who accidentally triggers the return of the Predators after coming across their technology. With the hunt on, the boy's father, his unit of degenerates, and a scientist they picked up along the way all set out to save the child and take out the alien menace that stalked the streets. My general rule of thumb with sequels is that not only must they be a solid film on their own, but they must also build on the history and expand on the lore of what's come before it. With that in mind, the Predator introduced some fantastic elements by expanding on what we knew about the trophy hunters, and explaining that not only did they learn new tactics and strategies from the game that they hunted, but that the Predators also extracted the DNA of their prey to create ultimate Predators. At the same time, the story was so sloppy that I couldn't appreciate this addition without being distracted by some of the poor decisions that were made in the film. The success of films like Predator and Alien is that they don't show the full creature until the end, forcing the audience to piece together an image of what they thought it might look like based on each of their encounters, until the revelation in the final act when the films reached a crescendo. The newest addition to the franchise shot itself in the foot by revealing the ultimate predator in the trailers, instead of bits and pieces, which meant that I went into the theatre pretty much knowing how the film was going to unfold. Don't get me wrong, the predator armour and weapons were deadly, and from an action point of view, this film ticks all the boxes, but man does it lack an emotional core, any sort of character development, and most importantly, tension. Apart from the child, and to some extent his father, it was really difficult to connect with any of the characters, especially the team of unstable soldiers who were all lazily introduced, revealing their quirks within five minutes of each other, before instantly bonding and deciding to hunt down the greatest threat mankind had ever seen. Other than McKenna who wanted to save his child, the motivations of the team was also sloppy. And most importantly, apart from a few moments when they were face to face with the Predator, they didn't seem overly terrified of the Hunter, which is the whole bloody point. If the protagonists aren't scared of the titular creature, how could we be expected to suspend our disbelief and feel fear? Looking back at the film, there is only one moment in the entire picture that had any sort of tension, and that was with Dr. Brackett attempting to leave the lab, while the Predator went on a killing spree in the other room. The Doc has to essentially get through a decontamination chamber by removing her clothes, while the Predator got closer and closer to her. Honestly, this should have been the tone of most of the film, and was what I was expecting based on the trailer, but this ended up being a single moment of terror that got lost in the film's attempt to be funny. This terrifying moment was also cancelled out by the actions of the very same Doctor, who had no military experience and was seen chasing down the Predator on her own. I get that she wanted a sample to study, but come on, really? The Predator is literally killing every other person that gets in the way, and we have a biologist keeping up with its pace and doing some ridiculous stunts. I genuinely love Shane Black's body of work, and applaud his attempt at expanding the lore of the Yachua, but man did they get this movie wrong, which ended up being a poorly paced mashup of jokes and aliens. And as a result of this, the newest installment does not feel like a Predator film, but merely a film that featured the Predator. All in all, though it's still a fun action picture, the Predator was a major disappointment that didn't live up to the rest of the films, and because of this, I think it's actually the weakest entry in the Predator series. Well that's all for today folks, I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. I'm thinking of doing an explanation video exploring some of the changes to the Predator lore that were made in the film, so if you'd like to see that, please let me know in the comments below. If there's any other stuff you'd like me to check out, please don't hesitate to ask. 
As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by.